I want to speak, go back to what I was preaching about. I call it the principle of returns too. The principle of returns. And Matthew chapter 13, we are all going to read from 24 to 30. If you don't read loud because your legs are hurting you or your voice are hurting you from where you should or shouldn't be yesterday night, you are still going to shout and read this scripture together. Let's go. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 24. Ready, steady, go. Jesus gave them another parable. To Who gave them the parable? Jesus. Good. What did he say? The, the kingdom of heaven is like a man. What kind of seed did he sow in his field? Remember I spoke last week that when you, from your harvest, you take the best of the seed and you plant it. He says he planted what? Good seed in his field. Come on, verse 25. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sold weeds resemble we will do this next week weed among the wheat and went away verse 26 ready keep reading so upstairs read along with me so the servant did you not sow good seed in your field then how does it have weeds in it? He replied to them, come on, an enemy has done this. The servant asked him, then do you want us to go and pull them out? Come on. But he said, no, because as you pull out the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Uh, verse 30, ready? Let them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, first gather the weeds and tie them in the bundle to be burned and gather the wheat into my burn. I'm going to deal with that next week. I just want to do or uh, walk with this. I'm talking today on working the seed. Uh, listen to me, guys. Let me give you a, 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 a brief recap. The power of harvest refers to the culmination of a season's labor. Harvest is determined by sowing seed. And everyone in this place has seed. If you haven't heard my part one, let me just put a disclaimer out. I am not talking about money. I think the church has debased seed sowing to just money. And has totally uh, diluted the gospel. So if you're in church for the first time and you say, oh, see, they're going to speak about money. You, you've missed it. You might want to go to part one. So that's why I'm giving you a recap so you will understand where I'm going. It has a relevance to money, but the whole life is not about money. Everyone has seed. Let me lighten you up. Tap someone. Say you have seed. Everyone has seed. Maybe not discovered, used, but everyone has one. And your life is a seed and everything you have, either money, time, people, are things that you can plant or things that you can consume. Meaning your seed can be planted or your seed can be consumed. The principle of return, we're talking about the principle of return. And the principle of return can be thought of as what I call the law of reciprocity. Or the concept that many people understand, the concept of karma. Uh, the idea that actions, good or bad, eventually returns to the person who performs this. And this can be phrased as whatever you give out, what comes back to you. The pri and this principle highlights three things. The principle of return. The principle of reciprocity. It highlights three things. It highlights accountability, repentance, and restoration. Then I spoke about the reality of your seed. And Matthew chapter 13 verse 24. Listen to what it says in the message. It says, he told another story. God's kingdom is like a farmer. So we're talking about agriculture here. Who planted good seed in his feed. Field, who planted good seeds in his field. So let me say the first thing. Seeds are 
planted. Seeds are planted. Wheat is planted with great intentionality. In other words, wheat is not going to grow in this ground if it is not planted. It is not a natural result of a climate, of soil, of rain and sunshine. Seed has to be planted. You must plant plant your seed. You must plant the seed of your time. You must plant seed of mercy. You must plant seed of work. You must plant seed of your future. Your life is a seed. Seeds must be planted. You can consume every opportunity you have and you think you have time because your time is ticking. Your life is a seed. Where you are right now is a seed. Every day you wake up is a seed that you can plant and seeds are not supposed to be withheld regardless of the condition because if you miss the time of planting you will miss the time of harvest proverbs chapter 20 verse 4 says the lazy man will not plow because of winter he will beg during harvest and have nothing Meaning that we must recognize that the time that we have right now is a precious time and it needs to be planted. How many people know that even between you in your relationship, in, your, in, 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 in uh, things you do, the time you spend with someone is time, is, is seed planted. That is coming back to you. The time you walk up to someone and say, oh, you're moving. Can I come and help you? And you're there from morning till evening. It is a seed that you have planted. Seeds have to be planted. You can't keep making excuses for not doing it because the atmosphere or the conditions are not right. Many people in our generation and this generation have what is called entitlement mentality that if it doesn't fall into the jurisdiction of what is convenient, you will not do it. You plant for the future. Don't let your present rob you of your future. So many people wait for the right moment and they never use their gifts. But there's another thing that I didn't say two weeks ago that I need to tell you. The connector to your seed is the ground that it is sown in. Listen to me. If you plant the right seed in the wrong soil, there will be no results. And many people are waiting for their harvest but have sown it in the wrong soil. Not every soil is convenient for a seed to plant. Mark chapter 4 verse 5 says, Other seeds fell on the rock where there was not much soil. And immediately a plant sprang up because the soil had no depth. The fact that some fell on thorns and rocky places doesn't mean that there is an absence of power of productivity because all seeds are right but not all soils are right. Some soils are good, but the production rate is minimal. Some people can be bad soil and even drain the gifts that God has on the inside of you. Some, some soils are bad. Not every relationship, you know I'm going to go there, is a good soil. Not everybody you come into in a relationship, you're going out with somebody, is a good soil. And some of you are like, hmm, maybe you also are not good soil. <laughs> not everyone. And that's the reason why you can toil in a relationship and nothing comes out of it because the soil is not a good soil. The soil is not conducive for you. No, you can't put, what, what would I say? You can't grow oranges in an arid land. And many people are toiling instead of laboring because you are in the wrong place with the wrong people actually let me say to say you this there are some soils that you need to leave to rest for god to take you to another level the same people that are you, that were your friends today may not necessarily have to be your friends for your tomorrow because where god is taking you is different from your today but many of us are hanging on to soils that are not good enough. I was in a relationship for seven years. Wrong soil. 
My wife said, yep. Long story. And she also. But immediately she came across rice soil. She prospered. In fact, when she came and got about right soil, seven years just became 16 months. Because if you get with the right people, I'm telling you, you will start to soil. You will start to do things that are great. Because bad communication corrupts good manners. Who you associate with, you become who they are. And many of us do not understand that our seed, if we plant it in the wrong soil, it will not bear any fruit. We're, we're raising a building for right now for where we are. Every day, most of the time I'm, when I'm walking, I have my God, let this be good soil. As people sow into it, let them know this is good soil. It's not every pastor you give money to. It's not every ministry you give money to. Some of them are hirelings and thieves. They do absolutely nothing. One day, I was driving with my wife. We got to Old Street. I think it was, it was Old Street. And it was raining. And I saw a woman, probably elderly, carrying two black bags. Opened the door. You know when you open your door with your bum just to be able to put, took it out, walked across the, in the rain, opened the big bin, put it in there, and was running back. As she was running back, my heart was in my mouth that, Father, don't let this woman fall down. And as I started to drive, God says, did you see what I told you to see? I said, yeah. He says, that woman, she goes to church. She gives her tithes and offering. And some man of God, a woman of God, will start to use her money to go to Barbados for a holiday. He says, the day you do that, I'm finished with you. Because we do not see what happens behind the scenes with what people bring in and many of us feel that we're entitled and I'm talking to pastors all around the world. It is a, it's a seed. And many people are sowing seeds into the wrong ground. Uh, 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 there are some places that are not good seeds. No, no good soil, sorry. So seeds are supposed to be planted, but you've got to know where am I planting my seed. Let me give you this free of charge. Many of we who have parents, we are sowing seeds into our friends, but not sowing it into our parents. And, 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 and 99% of the church went quiet. Uh, uh, you're eating everything. If your friend, if your parents says, Taliqua, I need 50 pounds this month. Mom, 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 what did you do with your money? Look, look, the one who is asking, the foolish person who is asking the question, what did they do with their money? You have been living in that house for five years. You've been working for five years. You don't have 50 pounds. Shame, 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 shame. But yet... Your friend will call you that evening and you will get yourself up and you will get in your car and you will go to a place and eat over 150 pounds and saying, ah, we're, so, we're getting to know each other. What a bad soil. Don't laugh, just change. What a bad soil. No, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. You, I've sat down. You know, I always sit down with my homies here. If you are living at home, the maximum, if you're living at home and they don't tell you to pay council tax, pay mortgage, the maximum you can ever spend, maximum, is going to be probably five, six hundred pounds. Maximum. If you want to dispute it, come and see me tomorrow. Let me do your budget. If, if you've got the liver or the bottle, come, come and see me. The maximum, including that iPhone, whatever you bought, the maximum, really, when you're, when you're living with your parents and you're, check, go home, sit down, make a calculation when your parents are not, the maximum. 
And how much do you get? Two five, two six. And we're wasting our money. There is no accountability of it. So that when God even asks you to sow, I don't have money. When your parents ask you, I don't have money. When you're supposed to buy your property, I don't have money. Because I've done calculations with not. My wife can ask over hundreds. I have never felt the maximum, sir, that I will ever get from anybody is a thousand pounds. And that thousand pounds is because that person is giving their parents 300 pounds a month. So even on that, and I deduct that from 2,500, or what? There's still how much left? One five. What did you do with one five? 2,500. Let's even say 2,000. So 2,000 times 12. How much is that? 24. It's 24, isn't it? It's 24. And you spent five years working. 100 and something has flushed down the drain. Why? Because your seed where you're sowing it is wrong ground. If you, if, if you don't like me, especially those who are online, not those who are stays watching me online, go home and sit down. Oh, I beg you, go home, sit down, do a budget. See if I'm lying. And the reason why many people are not making any progress is because the ground in which you're sowing your seed is wrong. Let me move on. Seeds are not only supposed to be planted, but I want you to tell you to, for you to notice that your seed is productive. Seeds are productive, they're prolific, they're fruitful, they're dynamic. You are a seed. Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 12. Let's move quickly. For the seed shall be prosperous. For the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit. And the ground shall give her increase. Can you see those two in connection? And the heaven shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of these people to possess all these things. At its core. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Don't chat with anyone so you're not a disturbance. In fact, they have told you stop chatting with someone so you do not cause somebody to walk away from church. So listen to me. Seeds at their core, they hold the blueprint of life. The seed it symbolizes the beginning of something greater than itself. You have no idea that your seed is something that is greater than yourself. The seed is the image of the harvest. So I've got this thing here right now today. Listen, look at this. Look at this. You can see that this seed, this, this seed, because I love my homies at home. This seed. In fact, I found out this morning that you can only get seeds these days in organic uh, so, uh, sorry uh, so, so this morning I got oranges I cut it too and there was no seed in there so you, you are blessed in this service uh, so seeds look at this as I peel it seeds this orange has this small seed and this small seed when you see it is just a image of what is bigger than it is. Many of us is this lemon? <laughs> ah, no, no, no. No, 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 no. I'm not my son. I was about to take it and, you know, say, well, no, 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 no. Uh, many times when we eat the orange or the lemon, what do we do with the seed? We spit it out without recognizing that as big as this orange or this lemon looks, it comes from this small little seed. I need you to understand this image. Why? Because there are two lessons in this. Number one, there is potential in smallness. There is what? Potential in smallness. Many of us are looking for this, but this only comes from this. There is, you've got to understand this, that there is potential in smallness. So don't despise the size of your seed. Size does not matter to God. You, and listen to this, you may be able to count. Let me go there here so I can see it. How many Seeds 
Can you see? Those who sit with me, they, they help me. How many seats? Three. You can see one, two, three. This one, two, four. You can count the seeds in an orange or lemon, but you can never count the oranges in the seed. I think you just missed it. So, 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 this little seed that you despise, you can count it now. But how many lemon and oranges in this seed, you can't count it. So, if you despise your days of little beginning, you have despised your greatness. That's why Job chapter 8 says, Though thy beginning was small, your latter end would abundantly increase. Because a seed is a small beginning with a huge future. The acorn has within it an oak tree. The little bitty acorn that you see has all it needs to make it into an oak tree. So there is potential in the little seed. I watched the match uh, legally, uh, 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 a boxing match uh, yesterday between the uh, AJ and Dubois. Is it Dubois? Dubois, yeah, Dubois. He, he's got the name. I mean, I, I mean, he's got the money. I, I watch. I watch the match. When I when I finish the match, when they finish the boxing match, do you know the first thing I went is I haven't heard this guy, so I went onto Wikipedia to just find out who really is this guy, and it blew my mind. Do you know that his first heavyweight championship belt that he had, whether recognized or not, was in the midst of 500 people in one dark, dingy place. Nobody knew who he was. 500 people. 500 people. 500 people. Less than that celebrated him winning a championship. 500. I'm not sure if it was your call or one of those. 500 people. Somebody asked me, if the guy had given up on 500, would he be boxing between 96,000 people? Because he didn't arrive at 96,000 people yesterday. He arrived at 96,000 when he had his small little seed. He had already appeared before 96 by what he did with that seed. What are you doing with your seed? Because even that little business, don't despise it. For that business is going to lead you to the excellence of greatness. I need to talk to somebody at home. Don't be despised. Don't despise your littleness. Don't despise I'm lonely. Don't despise things are not working out for me. Because I've got encouragement for you. Though you're sitting down at home, I just want to show love to you. That God is going to elevate you if you stop despising that little seed. That little seed has potential for greatness. That's why one pound can be 2,000 pounds. It depends on how you look at it. It has greatness. Don't ignore the seed of the person. Because you're looking for a harvest. So, when you're going to date someone, eh, 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 he has potentials, but I can't wait for potentials. Are you potential? No, 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 seriously. Many of us, when I dated before, we did potential. This one, potential. And then I see a lot of people on the internet that don't date potential. Okay, fine. But if potential can prove to you that I'm on my way to greatness, why not? I didn't say date potential. Date track record. If the track record shows they're doing something, it may not be enough to buy you a bag, but at least they are doing something. And who are you to be the judge of potential? You can't even see your own potential. So, 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 my wife dated me purely on potential when I was wearing a cream jacket. Don't put that picture up. Cream jacket, uh, green trouser, and wine shoe. Look at that combination. God, um, which one of you beautiful ladies will go out with somebody whose color combination is outrageous? Don't put, if you put, I'll fire you. Because that is not where. 
with Jericho's at that particular time. Because when you don't have money, just do anything you can to at least be attractive. Not nothing was happening at that particular time but that little seed has become a oak tree today great things are not wrapped in packages that you see every microphone everything that we're using today came from somebody's seed of an image and many of us we are heading for a harvest without looking at the seed the money you have right now is not for you to buy another bag. The money you have right now is not for you, bro, to buy another shoe. The money you have right now is not for you to travel. Let everybody who is traveling keep traveling. You keep traveling with your seed in your spirit. For in one time, that seed will take you before 96,000 people. Don't look at me because I'm not bread. I mean, I may be in the wheat stage. I may even be in the seed stage. But I'm on my way to where God has destined me to be. And many people will meet or meet people when they're going through their transition. So you get into a relationship. You know I'm going to go there. You get into a relationship. Eh, she's, 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 she's just not it. Who did you create? Just not it. I'm just looking for somebody who, who can, who can compliment me. You. If you find somebody who can compliment you, you're, you're heading for the wrong direction because you can't compliment you. Uh, we didn't get here in, in, in a day. 27 years down the line, we still have issues where we argue upon, especially time. <laughs> time. Ah. time we're still working on time I didn't say who is working on time but we're still working on time but we didn't get there in one day but what we're saying is that many people are looking for harvest and you're missing the seed for in this little tiny seed there is potential I don't know how you came to church today, but let me give you one encouragement, not rebuke. You are a seed, and there's great potential in your seed. That's why if you understand the potential of your seed, you will not sow your seed in every single soil. That means who you date. Let me see your, oh, you got a ring on. Who you... <laughs> That means, put it on me, leave, leave her alone so she can come and sit down. She's pushing me to move her to one side. <laughs> That means who you date must understand your potentials. Meaning, because you know your potential, you are just not going to go out with any fool. And when they start to mistreat you, you step out with confidence that God has a plan and a purpose for me. The reason why there's much abuse going on is because many people don't understand what potentials they have and they're still looking at themselves in the eye of this little tiny seed. Your seed is just an image of your harvest. Don't let any man or woman kill your seed before you reach your harvest. Number two, inside everything, we're talking about smallness. Inside this smallness is power. Inside this smallness is potential. And inside this smallness is power. There is hidden power in smallness. The power of a seed. I'm going to go somewhere and I'm going to hit some men really hard right now. The hidden power inside a seed reminds us of the unseen potentials that lies within everything. Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 to 32, I'm going to teach now. He says, he's so gone about another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted. You see the word again? Planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest. It is what? The largest of gardens 
plants and becomes what a tree so that the birds will come in and perch on its branches listen to me seed men shout amen seeds represent the continuation of life it is carrying a genetic code from one generation to the next so from a single seed entire ecosystems can be formed sustaining not only the plant itself but other sources and species that depend on it for food for shelter and for oxygen that seed what the bible says about that mustard seed is that it will grow so much that it will be advantageous to everybody else than itself fathers your children are seeds and they multiply according to your kind and there was quietness and silence in the house i want to talk to fathers because this year alone we've done 45 baby dedications apart from the two we're going to do today so people are replenishing and multiplying it is no more covid people are even after covid is getting so 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 your children are seeds of investment not an inconvenience your seed is an extension of you mothers and fathers i'm just addressing fathers with you your seed is an extension of you that's the reason why please do just sleep with anyone and impregnate them and move away because your seed is an extension of you and if you see your child as an inconvenience rather than an investment you're going to lose out in the future I, I I remember there was a day I came back from home and 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 I came back from church. Sorry, came back from church. I did first service, second service, and then I did and I did baptism. As soon as I got home, as my wife gave me some food, you know, after the food you just knock out. I was dozing off like this, and then my son came to me. He says, "Dad, can you play football with me or table tennis?" I looked at him like, "Ha ha ha ha!" Immediately, his mom looked at me. And says, Jay, sorry, uh, dad's tired. And he says, oh, okay, dad. And as he was walking away, something told me, am I an inconvenience? Is this boy an inconvenience or is he an investment? Why? Because I've, I've spent my energy on you lot, but hasn't spent my energy in my home where it matters because this is work and a blessing i do not take lightly about it but i won't want to lose my home so that my son will not hate the god that his fa father serves so i got up my weary end and i played football until my legs were dropping but he was happy i played table tennis with him but he was happy you know why he, because he was not an inconvenience he's an investment and it's these little things that your children remember when they grow old that when you can't take care of them and it's their time to take care of you then you will see and that's the reason oh am i going to say this in the second service i might as well say it that's the reason why i'm a pastor i've seen many young ladies who want to get married and say to me i just want to walk down the aisle by myself because my dad was not there and before i will not allow them to walk down the line and the aisle unless their dad is there but i've repented why would they be upset on the best day of their life because you failed to invest in their life and i will say to them i will do reconciliation i will do restoration you will be uh, you'll be you'll be together but if you choose to walk down the aisle by yourself walk down the aisle by yourself because you cannot eat where you have not sown And there won't be much claps because many fathers are saying, eh, but it doesn't matter. It matters. We are having too many black, white, Caucasian people who are fatherless and motherless. And mothers, be very careful the seed you sow into their lives. Because most of the time, you are angry because that guy has gone off with somebody else. He wants to take care of his child. And any seed that you sow has power to replicate itself. And, and, and let me say this to everyone. The seed will always be more powerful. Your seed, listen to me. My son will outlive me 
outrun me and outperform me. That's what we pray. So if you sow faith into your child, your child is going to do better than you do. But if you sow faithlessness, anger, disappointment, they're going to do better than you. So if you are pregnant with your child and you're, 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 you're sowing seeds of sorrow, the child is going to grow up sorrowful. Because seeds are powerful. And many fathers, many mothers have despised the size of their seed because they have not seen, they're not seeing their seed as an investment. My son, my daughter, they are investments, not inconvenience. So if you are watching me online, if you're watching me in church, and you have left your sons and daughter behind, you still have time to invest in them, even though it may be difficult initially. Keep at it. What you're sowing today, someone else will reap it tomorrow. That's why there's a generational curse in some people's life. Because of what we've sown in our yesteryears. And as I close, I need to give you one. Just a bit. I need to give you one more principle. And then we close. Because not only are seeds planted and seeds productive. Think, l listen to me. Listen to me, my young ones. Listen to me, my homies. You're, please, don't waste a day. Don't waste time. Everything you do today must be intentional. Don't copy somebody else beside you because that person may be in their hardest season while you're in your seed season. And listen to this. The principle of return or harvest requires the following things. I'll give you one. Number one, with your seed, you must work it. It's called working it. This is where I may miss some Christians this, this afternoon. Work the seed. Don't wait on the seed. Seeds are not for lazy people. Now let's read this scripture in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 28. This is a very common scripture. And I see pastors, including me before, foolishly, saying, The Lord! Ha, 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 ha! Sha! open his good treasure the heavens God is opening the heavens ha, 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 to give rain rain is coming 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 pray for rain is coming rain is coming rain is coming of your land at this season it's foolishness what did he say he says to bless all the work of your hand meaning if you don't walk you will you will die shouting God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sow, that he should reap. So let's stop making rubbish of this scripture. He says, the Lord shall open to you his good treasure. The heavens to give the rain on your land in its season. And to what? Bless all the work. Not works. That means focus on one. The work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. So listen to me carefully. You cannot eat better than your work. Your blessing is going to be work. When you get through dancing, shouting of the promises, you've got to understand that you're going to break sweat. This generation does not like work. You are going to have to put in effort. You have got to grind. Is there any word that you use these days? You've got to grind. You've got to what? Grind. Tap someone beside you say, grind. You go to grind. Nobody succeeds by accident. Nobody wins a marathon accidentally. Nobody wins the Olympics accidentally. Nobody gets a master's degree accidentally. Nobody gets a promotion accidentally. Just because you prayed doesn't mean you will win. This is work. As you can see me, this is sweat. As you can see me, this is labor. Because this is agriculture. And agriculture means that the intention of sowing the seed is that I may have wheat. And the intention of having wheat is that I may have bread. So I must work the seed. You must work it. Stop kneeling down before your Instagram page. And saying, 
followers, come. You woke up 12 in the afternoon. I woke up 5 in the morning. And you're quoting grace. Are you normal? <laughs> you're quoting grace. Did I say there's no time of rest? No. But, 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 but seriously, we, 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 the Pentecostal Christians, they love to pray but not work. That's why you can go to a place and on a Tuesday, Wednesday, you can see 50,000 people there. What are they doing? And we say our economy is going down the drain. What are you doing every single week? Huh? If you have work, work is what God says he will bless. The little savings, the little giving, the little exercise. Ah, let me stay there for a second. Ah, my fam, let, let me speak to you. You are not sowing into your life. You dismiss your exercise trainer. You wake up in the morning. Three course meal. Only you. Fried egg. Uh, bacon. Don't look at me funny. Sorry, I'm going to say it. And then... Uh, uh, ash brown plus I can get bread that they bring outside sometimes and then by the time it's 12 you're snacking by the time it's 1 o'clock you sit down with a bowl of rice by the time it's 10 p.m. Abula are you you you're, 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 you're not you're killing your body many of you your body is working overtime I've got to say this as a pastor i don't want to bury my young ones too early depression is setting in because you are not exercising your life i sat down in a party with somebody who says pastor Ty, you're looking good what are you doing i said wake up at 5 30 in the morning then you will know what i'm doing he didn't come for free nothing comes for free one day did i not take over after you Hey, and I took over after her. As our trainer finished with her, then I entered into the whole house of pain. <laughs> Why? Because this is my seed. This is my body. This won't speak to me in the years to come. One pastor, the leading pastor in the world, Pastor Shimono, he said it. He says, have you ever seen an old fat man. My life changed. The, 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 the way we're going on with our bodies, with our lives, we are killing ourselves. And you're gathering friends of the same weight, friends of the same thought, friends. And you're challenging yourself to who can eat the most. You're drinking different kinds of alcohol, different kinds of food. This is the time for you to live healthy. I am telling you from my heart, because listen to me, you've got to work it. Nothing comes for free. You wake up in the morning, you don't feel like going to the gym. Then you go. My trainer will say, your appearance is 50%. So I calculate. After 15 minutes, I've done 10. After 30 minutes, it's 70 percent as I've passed. How many of you get there and then you suddenly, after you finish, say, Thank God I came? Look, no condition will be right. None of us got to where we where, where we are. When my wife had her, uh, her son, after six months, she was still saying, I can kick her off the bed like baby, start to exercise. I don't want to be, I don't want to take care of my child alone. Hey, I just had a baby. Six months, if they were paying you. To walk the catwalk, everything would have gone. Let's go. So she also challenges me. We, it's what we eat. It is what we eat. And many of us are killing ourselves because of what we eat, how we live our lives. And many of us, we need to be careful so that at a particular age where you need to be running with your children, you can't run. 
I hope this will not come offensive. But Jesus also's message was offensive, so we'll be okay. And please come back next week. Somebody has to tell you. And, and let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. Because some people are saying, yeah, I, I don't have any way. Can you run? Can you exercise? You, 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 you may be slim, but you're not fit. Because I've run with guys who are slim. And after two minutes, they're like, ah. I'm like, ah. What happened? How old are you? Check how you know if you're fit. And you know the worst thing that's happening. No, let me go back. Let me finish my statement. Check how you know if you're fit. When a bus is coming, when you run to the bus, see if you do not need people to lay hands upon you to resuscitate you. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Many of you are not sowing. It is hard work. And you need to sow into your life. Where 50 year olds are looking better than 28. It is hard work. I woke up Saturday morning. I did not feel like it. But you know what? When something becomes a habit, you can't sleep. You, 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 you've got to start to work the soil and the land and the seed. And you are seed. Let your children, children enjoy you. There are grandparents right now that are taking care of your baby. If they did not live right, how can they take care of your child? And yet they take care of your child. You invite them to take care of your child. You travel. And then you go... go it, 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 because they said it, it's inclusive. Doesn't mean everything is inclusive. Ha -ha. How I was in Las Vegas. Don't go. But I was in Las Vegas. And I sat there. Me and one of my friends. We sat there. And an ambulance came to pick somebody up. We just heard boom. The guy just, with his plate, with everything, the plate was full. He ate so much that he passed out. It is not a lie. We were there. You get to a place and they say to you, oh, it's a, uh, eat as much as you can. It doesn't mean you should eat. And then he says, as much as you can, not as much as you want. Eat as much as you need. I, I, get, I get into it too. I, 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 I've missed it too. Many times, ah, I paid for something and then suddenly it's all there. Ah, it's very difficult not to. But if you're going to do it, exercise, then eat. At least keep it balanced. But this generation, the way I'm seeing some of you, I'm not placing any judgment. Are you going to last this decade? It's hard work. Maintaining this gift of the body is a Bible says bodily exercise. What does it do? Profit little. The word is profit. My wife is giving me an idea. Is enough? No. No. And the reason why I'm saying it is because all of you guys are not in our shoes. What we need, what we deal with on a daily basis, and most of it is down to health, down to what you're doing with your body, down to what you're doing with your mind. You can't keep getting negative things in your mind and making progress. It is hard work. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 11, let's close, says hard work means prosperity. Only a fool idles away his time. Proverbs 12 24 says, work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and never succeed. If you are going to go forward in life, you must be spiritually, mentally and physically committed to your task. At 80, I still want to be jumping up. You've got to be committed to your task. Everybody must learn to work. And if I'm lying to you, let's conclude on Genesis chapter 2 verse 2. On the seventh day. Oh, everybody read with me. And on the... What? God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which we had done. My farm, they rest six days 
and walk on the seventh day. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 13 says, And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of his labor. Work is a spiritual necessity for some. Work is not an economic necessity. Set down a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings and not before mere men. You do not become a star by wishing or waiting. You become a star by working it. God wants us to be, to work it. And may I conclude, even in our relationships, many of us are lazy working on our relationship. Let me ask you the question. When last did you take that woman out? Let me ask you a question. When last did you even take the guy out? When last did you even go to your husband and say, Honey, today, I want to treat you. And we're killing our relationships because we're lazy. And that's why many of us don't enter into relationships because we're lazy. We are taught that they must do stuff for you. We've gone into this gender war. There's no gender war. Just be you. We're lazy to invest in our home. We're lazy to invest in our marriage. We're selfish that we can't even buy presents for our spouse, which is outside of their birthdays and their anniversaries. It is by shame that you buy something at Valentine's Day. But, 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 but have you ever traveled and you're coming back and your suitcase is filled with stuff for your spouse? You're working your relationship. When I entered into New York and my wife was not there and I bought some bunches of clothes, one lady on the counter said, have you done anything? Is this, is this, a, is this a forgiveness present? I'm looking at her and I, I had pity for her. I just said, may you, I said, are you married? They said, no. I said, may you marry someone like me. That's all. And I got their attention. What seed are you sowing? I've done nothing. The only reason why you're saying that to me is because you've never seen anyone before who would do something for you because they love you. It's a symbiotic relationship. It's tit for tat. And we're killing our relationships because we're lazy to work at it. Every time I travel, when I get back, my wife is the first question says, what did you buy for yourself? No, my joy is to buy for, our fam for my family. Myself, I I'll survive. I, I survived with cream jacket. What else? <laughs> And I'm not boasting. Nobody taught me. But you've got to work it. A happy wife, a happy husband is a happy life. Not wife alone. Everybody. Happy children. Your life will be... In fact, if your children are not happy, both of you are not going to be happy. So let's get there a happy family. Are we working at it? In our, you're, you're just dating someone. Are you working at... I know you're not... but. <laughs> Are you working at it? And I'm not saying in buying presents to shy away from your responsibility. Because many people can buy presents, but you're not present. Are you there? When her car broke down, did you get there, gave her your own car? So she can go and you sort it out. In the in M25 and you are cold. It's seed. One day my wife got a flat tire. Just only 15, five minutes away from the house. I'm like, babe, cars are not just getting and go. You need to check before you leave the house. I need to put that there. Like the tire didn't go flat while you, the tire was flat before you left home. But my wife is so comfortable. She just gets into the car. No MOT, MOT, anything that happens. Uh, she, uh, it's, uh, I, I just know once I can put the key in, I'm off. And as I got there, I just gave her my car, you go. And I sat there and said, how am I going to sort this out? Because what I didn't tell her was that the extra tire is also flat. So I was sending there like, Jesus, have mercy upon my soul. Then I called one of my sons to say, yeah, come down here, please. Let's take this tire. Let's get it done. Let's fix it. And all that kind of stuff. I found a solution. A solution. Do you carry your child? Is it only your wife? Is it only your husband? Are you sowing into your relationship? Because relationships take hard work. 
Ty, shut up and let's close the service. All right. I hope you got something from this. We'll just keep on praising him, raise him up. Oh, yeah. You see people taking their place in your love. Oh, yeah. As you keep your love, everybody's good, let's roll. So come on if you get to go. We don't care if you like it. We'll keep it moving till the night's up. Even if you wanna fight us, we'll shut it down and put the lights up. Oh, no, no. Oh, no.